In this video, we're going to look at the new features and changes in the latest version of Unity 2019.3. Universal Render Pipeline, Terrain Homes, New Editor Interface, Dot Sample with Multiplayer, and many, many more. Let's begin! Okay, so Unity 2019.3 has just come out and it contains tons of really interesting new features and especially lots of stuff becoming production ready. First of all, the most visible one is the new editor interface. As you can see, everything has a new flat design. Honestly, at first this new design was pretty jarring since I did spend thousands of hours looking at the old editor UI, but I've been using the beta version for a couple of weeks and by now it doesn't look normal. I do think it looks a bit cleaner with less distracting elements. A bunch of 2D tools are now verified packages, meaning they are out of preview and become production ready. The biggest thing is 2D lights, which are now officially supported, so they are no longer experimental. Along with those new lights also come 2D shadows, which make your 2D games look great. And you can also now officially add subtextures, so you can set a 2D normal maps and masks. Then there's the 2D animation, with all the tooling for creating skeletal animations. The 2D PSD importer, which lets you import a Photoshop file and automatically separate layers. This is honestly insanely useful, especially when you combine it with the 2D skeletal animations. Then you have 2D pixel perfect, 2D shader graph, sprite shape, and tile map. All of those are now in verified packages. As you know, I love working in 2D, so having more stable 2D features is always excellent news. The high definition render pipeline is out of preview, and the lightweight render pipeline has now been renamed into the universal render pipeline. With the URP also comes the 2D renderer fully supported. Previously it was in experimental and now everything should work great, so that includes official shader graph support for 2D. There is also a new post processing built directly into URP, so this replaced the separate post processing v2 package, although functionally everything should still work the same but be more performant. You simply don't need to install a separate package. I've used post processing before but I've never done a video on it, so now that we have a different new tool, let me know if this is something you'd like to see a basic getting started video. And along with the release of AGRP also comes ray tracing in preview, so that's quite interesting. Another one out of preview is the VFX graph. So this is excellent news and certainly something I plan on covering in the future. I've seen lots of great stuff done in the VFX graph, but I've never really used it. I've been really enjoying making all the shader graph tutorials, so now playing around with thousands or even millions of particles should be lots of fun. How it works is similar to shader graph, so I'm hoping the learning curve isn't too steep. The terrain system is also getting some terrain holes. This is not something I've ever used, but from what I know, this is a highly requested feature, so it's great to hear. Let me know if you'd like to see me do some terrain videos. I certainly would like to try the tool for myself. The incremental garbage collector is now production ready. This is potentially a great new feature that I have yet to try it out. Essentially, if your game is generating garbage, then at some point you will notice a massive performance dip in a single frame. That's the garbage being collected. It gets all bundled together and then everything gets cleared in a single frame. With the incremental GC, you should see less of those massive spikes and more tiny collections which should help your game stay more stable. Now there's a bunch of new options when entering play mode. You can set it to enter without domain reload, meaning if you don't modify your scripts, you can get into play mode pretty much in an instant. This is really excellent for speeding up iteration time. So you make a change, hit play mode and you're instantly in the game rather than having to wait multiple seconds for the scene to compile. This looks like an excellent feature to really speed up iteration, but there are some caveats, like for example you need to handle reloading your scripts yourself. So this is a very interesting topic that I definitely want to research. Also something extremely important is a change in the Unity 2020 release cycle. A couple of years ago Unity changed from one massive new version to three tech releases and one LTS release. Tech is where new features get added, and LTS stands for the long term support, where it only contains bug fixes. So if you want stability, stick with the latest LTS version, which right now is 2018.4. The change is in 2020, instead of three tech releases like now, there will only be two. So 2020.1 should come out in spring, with 2020.2 coming out in the fall, and finally 2020 LTS coming out early next year. One of the reasons for this change is because now a lot of new features are being worked on as packages. In the 2020 release, there will only be two main tech releases, but again, all the packages will continue getting releases as they're ready. So for example, the Entities package was just updated to 0.5 a couple of days ago. Entities and the entire dot stack are being developed at full speed, and I believe the target is still to get the core ready out by 2020.1. The feature of dots continues to be very exciting, and something I intend to continue covering. 
So related to that, the new Dot Sample has also come out. This is a fully working multiplayer third person shooter. It definitely looks very interesting, so it's something I plan to research to figure out how it actually works. I especially want to look into the dots netcode present in this sample. I've read lots of comments asking for multiplayer content, so I might actually prioritize that. Dots Live Link is another potentially very interesting feature. Since Dots is all about data, this lets you easily sync data between devices. So that's another thing that is extremely useful for a quick iteration cycle. There's also the entity conversion workflow. I'll have to look into it, but I believe this is the inspector update where you can see what components your game object will be converted into. Another package also moving along is visual scripting. It's still in the experimental stage, but it seems to be coming along nicely. There should be a new drop just around the corner, and when that comes, I want to look at it again and possibly make a small complete game just using visual scripting. And beyond that, there are tons more new features and improvements that I don't have time to cover here. So check the official page to see everything new. There's the mobile device simulator. There's Unity as a library, which lets you insert Unity directly into native apps. The input system continues getting developed. Quick search in the editor the addressable asset system for referencing offline and online assets, the serialized reference attribute, profiler improvements, UI elements and the UI builder, several AR and VR improvements, and many, many more. Again, check the official page to see everything new in this version. This video is made possible thanks to these awesome supporters. Go to patreon.com slash unitycodemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. So that's the long-awaited Unity 2019.3 version. As always, Unity continues to improve with every release and tons of new features coming out with others becoming more and more stable. I'm really excited for the future and I can see how Unity is currently right in the middle of restructuring everything. So you got the new release schedule, you got the package manager and you got dots. So by now I can definitely see where they're going with and how the next few years are guaranteed to be extremely exciting. So go ahead and download 2019.3 from your Unity hub. I'm going to go ahead and research all of this awesome stuff. All right, I'll see you next time.